So let's begin the rheumatology series. Uh, first topic from rheumatology, the most important, most high-yield. Let's talk about scleroderma. If you know proper Latin here, the word itself, sclero means hardening, derma means skin. Actually, it is a collagen deposit, collagen deposit or uh, antibody, autoimmune, antibody attacking the collagen, right? And they are getting deposited. Skin is replaced by what? Collagen, right? We can clinically classify the scleroderma into two types. One is called limited cutaneous cutaneous scleroderma limited cutaneous limited they are not spreading everywhere cutaneous kidneys affected or i can say they are spreading everywhere diffuse scleroderma diffuse means spreading everywhere in a simple manner a limited internal organ visceral organs are not affected in diffuse it will affect our internal organs also let's see Limited cutaneous have one more name. We call it as in all the exam, crust syndrome. Very easy to remember. Crust. C4 calcinosis. Imagine a lot of calcium in the blood. As a result, the patient can have increased blood pressure. BP will be high. R4 Raynaud's phenomena. Normally, it happens in cold countries. Person exposing to cold right because of cold exposure they will have sudden vasospasm vasospasm as a result the finger white purple color in fingers fingertips you can see that fingertips that's why what we give for them we can give them like if someone have this calcium channel blockers so once again, if someone got scleroderma and he have Raynaud's phenomena or individually Raynaud's phenomena, if someone asks you how you treat them, give them to prevent the vasospasm, calcium channel blockers, right? E4, the patient will have esophageal dysmotility. <laughs> My God, esophagus is not moving because you know, all the esophagus is covered with, deposited with what? Collagen, they will have fibrosis. Collagen fibrosis happens in, happening here. So the lower esophageal sphincter will, all, will be getting weakened. That can lead to GERD. So always associate gastroesophageal reflex disease and scleroderma in what manner? Esophageal dysmotility or collagen fibrosis deposition. Collagen deposition happening there. That's why we give, if someone has this condition, you have to treat them with what? High dose PPI. Proton pump inhibitor will be given. S4 sclerodactyly. Dacto means finger, sclero means heart and the skin replaced by what? Collagen. Here we will give a specific drug. Maybe you remember the drug that we use for Wilson disease, right? Pencilamin, like the chalate, the copper. You can give a drug for them here. Pencilamin. Then last one is very important, telangiectasia. What is ectasia, the word, stretching out? The blood vessel will stretch out. As a result, what you will have? Easy bleeding. You will have iron deficiency, anemia. Patient will have, right? And they will have bleeding from intestine, intestinal <coughs> bleeding. This comes because of what? Telangi ectasia. So these are the features we mainly see with limited cutaneous scleroderma. Here you will have pulmonary hypertension. One more feature pulmonary hypertension but do the lungs are affected no without lungs affecting no internal organs are affected here i told you this is autoimmune so the what is the main antibody for limited anti syndromere antibody anti syndromere antibody you will see for what limited cutaneous scleroderma very easy to remember everything. Now let's talk about the diffuse one. Oh, diffuse is very easy. The word only. You will have limited, all the limited features plus internal organs, visceral organs affected here. What are the organs affected here? First one, our heart. You will have in the heart what? Constrictive. 
pericarditis patient will have heart issues like constrictive pericarditis they will have lung disease interstitial lung disease interstitial lung disease as a result they can have your pulmonary what hypertension here there is injury to lung they are there without injury to what lung then then you will have kidney affected you will have nephrogenic crisis nephrogenic crisis due to scleroderma the kidney will be completely affected that's why here the, they will have nephrogenic what hypertension nephrogenic hypertension right we have to give them to protect the kidney ace inhibitors will give the patient angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor that is a drug that save what kidney so that's the main difference between diffuse and what limited in diffuse the antibody you see here is called everything you can total total topo total topo topo isomerase antibody or anti ssl scleroderma anti ssl 70 antibody so these are the main features you have to know from diffuse as well as limited scleroderma now there is a differential diagnosis here someone have same scenario like hard skin hard skin then they are having the crust scenario crust syndrome everything like vasospasm but they don't see any antibody or anything there instead they will give you someone undergone mri with what gadolinium no limit uh, diffuse here the limited symptoms plus they have given you history someone have gadolinium so that is called gadolinium induced gadolinium induced scleroderma like symptoms scleroderma like symptoms it is also called systemic nephrogenic systemic nephrogenic sclerosis there is no antibody here it's not an autoimmune here the person will mistake someone got scleroderma actually it is not scleroderma because someone used a contrast that can cause kidney damage or that can leads to what the same scenario like scleroderma in limited case so that must be ruled out every time so that's all about the important one that is what scleroderma thank you